Now, if you ask 16-year-old Pete if he ever thought he would be making an Angels and Airwaves documentary, the answer would be no, and I'd probably pass out and never wake up. I'm just realizing it was a far bigger undertaking than I had ever anticipated. So I think now it might be time to enlist a little bit of help from some individuals that specialize in documentaries specifically. Mark's got a really great channel diving into literally every facet of documentaries. Everything from A to Z when it comes to that very niche within filmmaking. And as a lot of you guys know, I'm making a documentary right now. It's been taking a long time, and for good reason, we're gonna get into that, but I legitimately wanted to enlist Mark's help to make my documentary better. This guy already, within the first like five seconds of being here watching the cut I have on the Angels and Airwaves film, in the first minute, he hit pause and blew our minds. Like, he changed everything already. It's like everything we had is garbage now. So <laughs> no, not true. We're starting You're over. You're so close. We're starting over. So let's talk about how long does a typical documentary take to make? I approach it like a YouTube video. I've just kind of assumed right off the bat it would take a few months. I mean, that's like asking, like, how long is a piece of string? Documentaries are about life. Life needs to unfold. You can't speed up life. I mean, if you try to force a documentary to happen, life to happen quicker, it's going to be, uh, is it disingenuous or not non-genuine? I mean, that was good. That yeah. Was, that was real good. Yeah. That, the, we could end the video Yeah, there that. you go. And it just takes time and takes consistency. And I watch people trying to outsource their documentaries. We even spoke about this. Do I just get another editor for this entirely? And, and then, so there's something being made? Like I'm trying to do this and I'm trying to run like a channel and like another business. And it just gets to the point where you're thinking like, oh yeah, yeah, I got to finish that because people are waiting for it. Well, I've found with my films when they're not going well, what it takes is my concerted attention. I just need to clear my schedule. I need to say that this film is a client, even if I'm not getting paid for it. Like I, the analogy I have is, is a documentary is like a boulder on a hill. You're not working on it, it's going backwards. You're losing momentum. And if you're just working on it every once in a while, you're just holding it in place. I've been holding it in place You've for just a been, while. Exactly. And the you film- You know, it's, it's, sorry to cut you off. It's, it's hard because you've got a lot of fans of Angels and Airwaves. I'm one of them and they want to see this. I want to give it to them. There's just like the pandemic happened that threw like a big wrench in it and the amount of time it's taken beyond what I kind of just loosely figured yeah. it would take has kind of discouraged me. But you are in such a good position right now. What's so awesome about that is good films, the main character changes and grows and learns new things. And often in life, the only way to learn is to live a bit of life. And so you have this awesome moment now with your film where there, it's taken longer and yeah. your characters are going to be learning more things. They're going to be experiencing new ideas. Life has been unfolding. Life has been Four unfolding. Years. And that's okay. And it's okay to feel overwhelmed in the middle of a documentary. That's part of the process is you have all this content, but the one thing you need to know, Pete, is what question is your film asking? I think one of the issues that I've also had is I shot it for a year and then the pandemic kind of forced me to take two years off. Then I got back to it. So if you actually remove the pandemic from it, I've probably only been working on it for less than two years with the pandemic gone. But with all this time, it's filled my head with so many different ideas that the theme that I originally had is like good, but maybe now I've got a different idea and, and then life unfolded and now I've got like five ideas. And now when you said to me, you came in, one of the first things you said was like, well, what like, question does it answer? You asked me a couple one word questions. Like if you could summarize it into like the core theme, like what is that? And I was like, well, if I was to break it into two, like I couldn't even, yeah. I, I had to yeah. take that lifeline immediately. Yeah. yeah. And I think the fear with making films is when we simplify the idea behind it or simplify our film into one sentence, one question, there's this fear that it's not going to be good. It's not going to be big. But when you do that, it gives you focus to get to the goal and then you get to add all the fun stuff in, but you have direction. If you want to simplify a film, what is a, a good doc? You, you have a question and then you explore the answers and then you celebrate the resolve or lack thereof. Really what you need is a character who wants something. And so if you can't define, this is the first thing I always ask people with their yeah. documentaries, who's your main character? And they're like, well, it's about poverty. I'm like, well, then if you don't have a film, you have a topic. Uh, and then yeah. from there, I'm like, find the character in that. Who is it? Is it about someone who's experiencing poverty or who's trying to solve poverty in their town? The next Next question, what do they want? If you don't have a character who wants something, you don't really have someone who's trying to 
answer a question. And so you need a character who's actually asking a question. Can I solve poverty in my town? Or, or can, in the case of your film, you know, can I reinvent myself? Mm. And then that question will guide you to know what to film. Otherwise, you'll have 100 hours of footage and you won't know what to cut. Yeah, like we got a lot of live footage. <laughs> yeah. And like the more of those questions I answer myself, I also realize, well, I've got a lot of stuff I just don't need. Like, I don't even need to go through a lot of it. I'm at the point now, like when I started, I was like, live footage, B-roll, let's get anamorphic. Let's, yeah, yeah. Let's make yeah. Tom look like the cool, I mean, he's already a pretty cool guy. Yeah. Let's make him just look like this is going to be so nice, so crispy. And now fast forward all these years and I'm like, I might not even really use any of it. Like, totally. Very, very little. Cool will kill your film because this is what we've always, we've shot photos and then they look cool and then we're like, oh, maybe I should follow, get into videography and then we shoot some commercials that look cool and then we're like, hey, I'm a filmmaker. Then we apply that to documentary and it doesn't work because you just have all this cool footage that's not answering any question and then you don't have a film, you just have a very long music video and there's a reason why music videos are four minutes long. Then if you just add cool footage and people talking about random things, then you have a really boring 40 minute film. A quick moment to thank our sponsors of today's video, none other than Squarespace. Can I have your glasses? Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that is very easy to use and if you need a website in 2022, this is the place to do it. You can set up a store, you run an entire business, set up a gallery, have a place for people to contact you. It's an imperative piece to the puzzle that is your business. Beautiful award-winning templates that are always being updated, 24 seven customer service. If you can type on a keyboard, you can make a website. No college degree required. I say that because I went to college for web design and it's mostly useless. <laughs> so hit the link in the description below to save 10% off your purchase when you're signing up for Squarespace. That is code McKinnon at check. Out squarespace.com slash McKinnon for 10% off your first purchase. Save you some money. I can see nothing right now. <laughs> Did your prescription get worse? I look like Mark Bone right now. You even used to have the hair like this. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and now back to Mark Bone teaching us how to make better films. You said something that was very interesting when talking about someone's dialogue, when you're dissecting someone's dialogue. Let's say you've got a master interview. You said they're either giving you information or they're giving you meaning meaning people in an interview are usually only saying two things they're saying information they're saying i'm about to go on tour that's information and you need a bit of information so people know what's happening in your film but then is the meaning and that's where you have to as a documentarian ask why a lot well why are you going on tour this is a mistake people do interviews tell me about your tour what's happening is you it cool fun? yeah you're fun but yeah you're nervous exactly and yeah. then you have a bunch of information yes i'm nervous or yes we're going to san diego then you got to ask why they could say like well i i want to see if i can still tour again well why well because i feel like people have forgotten who i am well why well because of this or why because this traumatic thing happened and then you go to the why and that's tell the me meaning that. yeah the, the the thin crust on the top of your film is the information and that gets you from point a to point b but then really your film is a about the why. That's where people connect. That's where you can take a famous person or an ordinary person and suddenly people love your film because they all connect with them. They say like, yeah, I, I felt forgotten or I had a traumatic event in my life and wondered, can I still go on? And, and that's where people miss that. They, they spend all this time either shooting cool footage or just spending on the information questions. And then they, they don't have a film that really asks a deeper question that people connect to. This is great. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a therapy session. This right. is just really good for me. So you've got hundreds of hours of footage. Yeah. You've just gone out and you filmed beat that it's stuff that you're going to use or not, whatever. You've come back to the studio. You've got a ton. So where would you start with hundreds of hours of 8K footage oh, gosh. of multiple tours over across different years, master interviews, like everything? One way to go about it is you literally get all the dialogue transcribed. You can get lost in the footage. But when you have a paper edit, you can start to see your film already and so again this is coming back to simplifying a complex thing a complex thing is 100 hours of footage but what's the simple thing what are your themes what does your character want what questions are they asking so then you can start going through and highlighting those you get overwhelmed when you stare at the full thing yeah. but then it's like go chop one tree down at a time but everyone looks at the whole forest and is like, oh, how can I do this? I've got so much great stuff and I, I can't wait to, to see it all but I'm looking at the whole forest and I just think okay well I'll walk through those woods tomorrow yep 
You know, yeah. I'll walk through the. Well, I got some. I got videos to make. Yeah. You know, like Mark's coming over today. Tomorrow, I got. I got. I'm making some shorts. Exactly. What are my next steps? What does Peter McKinnon do to further the Angels and Airwaves documentary? I know you're not going to want to hear this, but you're going to have to take some time off, and you're going to have to not work on a few other things, and you're going to have to treat this doc like it's the only thing and if you don't get this first full rough cut done then nothing else can start up that's a big commitment <laughs> docs require a big that's commitment scary. i've tried i learned this so hard on a feature doc i'm working on i tried to outsource it and i was like i'm just gonna jump in here i'm gonna uh, delegate I, delegate I'm a, I'm a youtuber now i can i can delegate i can run this i got i'm used to a million things at once yeah exactly and then i'm like and then i realized no i need to actually what i did is i put everything on pause took three weeks gone on zoom with my editor and we worked on it every it was just a job i was like i clock in at nine on this film and i won't turn off zoom because we you know we had to sure. share our screens not turning it off until five and just treated it like a job every day and man overnight my anxiety went away because mm-hmm. i was finally seeing progress yeah i, I need that rough cut and, and won't get done until you guys sit down okay so if you want to learn documentaries your channel is mostly focused if not entirely focused on documentary filmmaking but you just launched a course how many hours did you say it is so we have two modules, module one, module two, it's 35 hours now. And I don't want to intimidate people by that. We've had people say in the first five videos I learned, which is like half an hour, I've learned more than I learned in four years in film school. Well, you blew our minds <laughs> with, like, with one tip a minute into our like kind of rough cut. I, I just know I've been so lost in documentaries in my career that I made this course because I was like, I don't want people to have to feel this way. They're 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 not alone. There's help. <laughs> there's help. There's help. So yeah, the art of documentary.com, we reopen our doors on March 7th. We're only open two weeks a year for people to buy the course. So I can tell you from the day I spent with this guy, uh, if that's remotely anything that you're interested in as a documentary filmmaker or someone that wants to get into making longer form content, I would recommend checking it out because if it helped me, it's gonna help you and a lot of other people. So make better films. Make better films, tell better stories. We need your voice. We need you to make the film that you want, that's in your heart, in your mind. It has to get done. And you don't have to do it alone. That was good. There you go. That was like real natural. (laughs) I like that. That's awesome. Yeah, we need need your voice. We do. Mark, thanks so much for coming on. Pete. Thanks for helping me with this. I I don't think you're off the hook with helping me with it. No, I'm, I'm here, man. this was like the preliminary meeting. Yeah. I'll definitely be fielding little clips probably here. I'd love it. So. Let's do it. What a handsome guy he, he is, is eh? He is. I always look at him like beard's perfectly trimmed. He has a great, great hairline. Great smile. Great laugh. I know. Great laugh. This guy, <laughs> Let's try yeah. best Maddie laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> <laughs> that was better. That was better. Yeah. yeah. What a guy. I kind of did a, like an evil clown, probably from the It store. <laughs> We're on sale. I feel like this needs to be messier. Like I want, yeah, yeah. I just want more trash. Here we go, trash. I, used to, I don't know. I think it's cool when there's stuff everywhere. You've been inspiring me how you've oh, been thanks. venturing off yeah. into other directions. I now for three years on my doc on my YouTube channel, I called it a doc channel because that's all I talk about is documentary. Yeah. But I do like some other things. <laughs> Cheers to that. Cheers. Boosh. Just, just coffee and beer today, bro. Bro, uh, the upper oh, and the downer. Water. <laughs> looks like we had a party. It looks like Jesse's studio. <laughs> it's so messy. Oh, I was just there. Goodness, bro. Yeah. <laughs> That guy's studio is unreal. It's it's unreal. And what's amazing is how clean he makes it look in so many videos. And then you pan yeah. the camera over and it and it looks... Like a transfer station, <laughs> like, a, like a dump. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. It does. Yeah, the It store. I remember that. They had a they had a pencil. I wasn't allowed to go in it. No? Because, no, because they had a pencil shaver that was was a butt. Oh. And that would, and <laughs> if I funny. saw that, would, that would corrupt me. Yeah. So I, I wasn't allowed to Dude, go in. I went in there and I spent, I, I was always like, the shock pens or like the stapler that'll shock you. And <laughs> I love that stuff. The gum that you would take, and it would be like a mousetrap on your cuticle. I, you're, you're talking about. I, I, I oh, remember. I, I, I could like circle. I would you like look, look, look in and be like, "What's in there?" And I was, yeah. I was told that it was all just occult. It was. It was like bouncy balls and and then and like a pentagram. pentagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so this is like like birthday cards. It's yeah. like happy birthday, worship Satan. <laughs> yeah, dude, there's some weird stuff. The hype button. That would be a really bad 10 minute video, but that'd be a really funny 30 second short. And if it brings you joy. Yeah, exactly. At the end of the day, you know, if I'm pumped on it, I'm I'm pumped on it. If your schedule and your passions align, you will be fulfilled in your work. I would would agree with that. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) 